What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode, Plan Xbox Podcast, episode 18. I'm about two weeks late. Uh, appreciate you guys for rocking with me. I do apologize. I've been out of commission between. I got I think, sick last week. Uh, I was in, I'm still doing like financials for work. I got training going on. So I'm like, I'm not readily available to do what I like to do. And that content on YouTube and most importantly, playing video games. So yeah, I'm available here and here on Twitter to see what's going on, but I can't even pop shit for as long as I uh, normally do because I got you no know, other stuff going on, but I owe it to you guys to give you guys another episode of playing Xbox podcast and a lot went on and we got, you know, some, some takes and I know addicts been busy in the lab doing a ton of videos for sure. And, uh, he's been keeping, uh, pretty much YouTube fed. How are you doing attic? I'm doing pretty good, man. Things have been pretty, uh, intense here lately, man. I, 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 I can only imagine. I can only imagine, man. So, uh, what have you been playing? I've been playing a lot of cyberpunk currently and, um, yeah, it's it's been pretty interesting. Uh, are you playing the base game or Phantom Liberty? Uh, right now I'm playing the base game, but I do eventually plan on getting into, uh, you know, Phantom Liberty. Yeah. I'm going to, um, play uh i gotta I, i'm gonna start from scratch uh, i started the game a couple years ago uh i think i got stuck inside of a mission where i was inside i think a mansion and i was like looking at the cameras i forgot what the hell i was doing um but that was a while ago i'm gonna start the game from scratch uh and work my way up to phantom liberty after beating a uh, star uh field uh, it I, it made me want to play uh, Cyberpunk, and maybe I I maybe I I'll enjoy it uh, this time around. But I haven't really been playing. Uh, I, I'm lying. I did uh, get some hours in Liza P. Uh, in Mortal Kombat, I beat Mortal Kombat. Did, did you beat the spent. story? Yeah, yeah. That, tell me that story wasn't good. No, it was pretty good. It was it, it was pretty dope. Um, I like how they uh, put that, everything that, together. That, that last couple missions, man, was lit. Yeah, like, yeah they, they did their thing with that. I, I, I want to ask you, I mean, I, I don't know if it's spoilers because it can be done in a couple hours. Uh, who did you do your uh, who, who, as your hero to like finish everything off? Like, who do you use? I did Luke Kane. Luke Kane. Oh, wow. I did... Um, What's the dude that lost his freaking eyes, bro? Oh my god. Um Kenji or Kenji, Kenji. yeah. Kenji, the first go around, and then I did it again. Um I played through it again with I didn't do the Kenshi. And then I did it again with uh I believe it was sub uh sub zero. That's who it was. It was sub zero. That's who I did it with. Um, good game, good game, good game. I'm not, I'm not into fighters, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare go online to, to play that. Try to play against anybody online or competitively. But it was a good campaign to play through. Um, currently playing through um, Liza P. I'm actually stuck. Um, good game as well. I mean, they, they, it's probably the best. Souls game, uh, not made by from software. Um, one, one of the uh, best, um, and, and I've tried not, I'm trying to say that not to be prisoner moments. I really do love Wolong, and I think Wolong is probably not too much of a Souls game, but uh, I enjoyed the crap out of it. But I think Eliza P is more of an imitation of a Souls game, and I played other games that are similar to Liza P and hopefully other people will play uh, those type of games. I played still rising last year and I, that's the Liza P and still rising are almost hand in hand, except I think still rising might be a little bit easier. So I think that's where uh, Liza P gets the credit and Liza P. I hear Liza P is really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm struggling right now. 
but just the area that I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm really struggling. And I thought I, I thought I prematurely farmed extremely like early. Um, I'm a level, I think, 53, maybe. And I think I, I thought I would be too high from where I'm at, but it, I, I'm it's I'm still struggling. So I don't know if I'll I'll beat the game. I, I don't know. My drive isn't as strong. And maybe it's because I got a lot going on for work. But my drive isn't as strong to like the, to try hard. Like um, I haven't had to try to try hard when we were playing Wolong earlier this year. There was like this drive to like, uh, I, I want to get through this. I want to get through this. Um, Liza P is like, OK, it, it is challenging. There's nothing um, not taking anything away for it. it does look good. Great story. Great graphics uh, I like the combat and I like the level design. They did a lot of good things with it. But uh, the drive there for me is like I'm, I've been pretty much been playing it day by day took a couple of days off uh i think i'm about four or five bosses uh deep um but it's pretty decent have you have you started it yet i've been playing so much stuff here recently i just haven't had the chance to jump into that you know i i do plan on getting into it because you know it's kind of weird you're playing a souls like game and i'm not yeah um I don't know. And the thing is, is that I, I was looking forward to um, I was looking forward to uh, Liza P for a while. And the thing is, is that I was so caught up in like Starfield, like I didn't touch any game like during the time that start uh, until I beat Starfield. Once I beat Starfield, that's when I got to play around a little bit with other games and I went and started Liza P and played a little bit of Mortal Kombat. Then I realized Mortal Kombat is probably I could probably run through the game. So that's why I stuck with Mortal Kombat and then picked Liza P back up where I left off. And and uh, yeah, man, it's uh, again, it is a, a weird scenario because this is definitely up your alley of, you know, challenging games, uh, a fairly new one. And, uh, and it's fairly popular uh, right now. So. But it's uh it's, it's it's doing its thing. It's doing its thing. Day one on Game Pass. Game Pass has actually been relatively the quality of the games has dropped in Game Pass over the last couple of days, dude. It's to the point I can't even keep up, dude. Um, even Payday Three with all its issues, I hear when the game works, it's good. Yeah, yeah. I haven't touched it. I played a little bit of Party Animals. Um, obviously, Lies of P. Um, I played obviously Star Starfield. Um, I didn't even play Texas Chainsaw yet. Cocoon came out. Was it today or yesterday? That have that uh inside limbo type game, and it's like uh, like a ninety Metacritic. Uh, I don't know to be honest with you. Yeah, but that's gotten like uh, uh really good scores. Um, but I haven't, yeah, I haven't even been able to, to like utilize, uh, all the games that came out in game pass. And then we got Forza coming out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Forza is coming out this week. Uh, I definitely want to give that a try. I want to give that a play. I actually want to seriously play it. Uh, cause we, you know, like I said, we haven't had a, a Forza Motorsport game in six years. Um, I'm trying to think, dude, is, what else is do? There's a couple games in November coming out. And then you got you still got the like a dragon type games that's supposed to be coming into the game pass and whatnot. So um, before we get into it, because we, we, a lot of things went on. I do want to answer a uh, Patreon question. And this one comes uh, from Anthony May. Shout out to Six Mile Red Rum. Uh, Six Mile did apples and oranges with me uh some years back 2016 2017 when i was doing that show um he says what's up smooth is red rum i, I want to know do you think the next gears will be more like gears five or four it don't matter to me i just want gears i ain't played since 2019 and i'm having a itch um i want the direction to be more like gears five I actually feel like Gears 5 was a huge improvement over 4 to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I feel like Gears 4 was a, a, a regression. Actually, I think Gears 4 
even though there was things that I respected about Gears, I was just, I think back when Gears 4 came out, I was just happy that it was back and it looked good. It was like the first Gears on that generation of Xbox natively. Um, I, I, I like the characters, but there were some things I didn't like about it on the campaign side. I didn't like all the robots. It drove me nuts. The thing is, with Gears of War, I was used to like gore flesh and meat shielding and all that stuff. And Gears 4 is a bunch of robots that so just didn't feel right. Um, and I didn't like their mission base. Every like they, they had a couple of missions that felt like ripped out of like the horde mode uh, that they were doing. And I, that I was not really a fan of. I feel of. like if they took that snow area mm -hmm. and they were to replicate that in the uh, in the sand area, a lot more people would have a lot more positive things to say about oh, you're gears talking 5. About, oh yeah gears 5 so gears 5 i i really like i don't care what nobody says about gears 5 no, i'm not sure why gears 5 and gears 4 have the same rating uh gears 5 was significantly better they took chances with gears 5 um and this is why i don't like when gamers say we want you to change it up we want different things uh, I feel like the coalition made those necessary changes. They opened the game up, added some RPG elements to the game, uh, added biomes to the game. Uh, they added upgrade ability to the game. They added all these things that was never a part of Gears. They opened up the combat, the melee, uh, and, and added some verticality to the game. And I don't think those changes were appreciated in a way that they should have been. And, and they were overlooked. And the game, like I said, into what I thought was like a good, you know, I mean, not I, I thought the game was uh, I thought the game was really good. I thought the game was like an 89, 90. I think it settled around like an 84, 85. Not sure why. Uh, but if they do another Gears, I, I think it should be. Um, I think it should be more like Gears, uh, Gears 5 um, in terms of if we're talking about story. If we're talking about yeah, Gears, Gears Five has the better formula. It's just I feel like a good thirty percent of that game, the pacing started falling apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, if if for so, so story, I think they should you know follow the Gears Five formula, refine uh, you know enhance it a little bit. As far as multiplayer, uh, I, I I want something replicating Gears Two. Um, but we know what we're probably going to get. We're going to get gears and we're going to get some of that hero esque, uh, battle Royale type stuff that they're going to implement into it. Um, but I think, I don't think gears needs that, but that's just the way that multiplayer, uh, games are now. Um, I think the original gears, original halos had a good foundation and formula for what their multiplayer is and i think they stand out and they could survive in the environment of hero battle royale shooters i don't think every game needs to fall into that line but um when gears 6 eventually does come um i hope they can you know stick true to the classic gears multiplayer versus this Fortnite s type stuff that everybody's trying to do um but i personally believe you know trend chasing is the number one issue with the industry right now people people don't want to innovate they want to steal concepts of other developers and try to make the money that they're making and most of the mm -hmm. time they don't do a good job at comp uh, at, at copying their their stuff either no, that's true. That's true. It's like uh, they become a lot of these developers become like jack of all trades, master of none. And uh, when it comes to these multiplayer uh, games, is everybody's just trying to replicate the next thing. It's like the the multiplayer games that people are doing now is the obviously is your Fortnite type, your hero shooters, or is the those games like Party Animals. Believe it or not, there's a lot of games like that, uh, like that clay, lazy animation sort of type moves where it's like heavily physics based. Um, and, you know, they pop off and, uh, you know, everybody like, you know, goes to that trend hoping to replicate the same uh, success. Um, so while I was away, um, Microsoft had a massive leak 
uh, we learned about the Xbox Series X revision, which looks like a a cinder, a cylinder. Um, we had uh, the new controller, which actually it low key looks like a trash can, like yeah. like a small trash can. And you know, I, I get it; they probably weren't thinking that, but at this at this point, they should have thought that. <laughs> no, I thought that was me for a moment. I was like, "Damn, not again!" Um, I actually don't. It's mind weird it. how, like, when the fire alarm went off, it was weird trying to talk between the beeps. Yeah. <laughs> No, I actually don't. If that's the true design, I actually don't mind it. I really don't. I, d- I don't either, to be honest with you. I think it looks good. I mean, I, I the thing is, because once they went, once I like this current setup for the Series X, like I, I fell in love with it, uh, with the design. Um, I prefer it over the PlayStation Five design. I, I think I can easily see myself with the little cylinder, uh, the all digital Xbox Series X. So their their whole effort, their marketing plans and stuff for next year to roll this thing out, they're gonna roll out another Series S. These things are gonna be upgraded with two terabyte hard drives. Uh, the new controller, which is gonna have the little haptics feedback, whatever that the DualSense is doing, new Wi-Fi six. Um, the, the curious thing about it is, is more so like because they, they had the suggested price. The suggested price was to be four ninety nine. Um, and the the upgrades were minor outside of the, the, the design if that's the if that's the true design that's going to be the biggest difference but is the, the the key thing is the bigger storage space wi-fi 6 USB C, uh uh well straight USB C like uh import as well um the, the only thing that gets weird is that if the ps5 for what well, the ps5 <laughs> The PS5 Pro is a real thing. You got to assume that's going to be about five hundred dollars, and at that point, it would be more powerful because you know it's different. It'll be different specs uh, than the Xbox Series X revision. And if they're launching around the same time, it it would. I I don't know how that would work. You know, um, and and if this is still the plans, and do you think this is still the plans that so Phil Spencer re, re, responded and said, you know. But things change and we look forward to showing you our real plans and stuff like that. Like, like, do you have any context behind that? As far as the games, those can change because games get canceled all the time. You know, I I think the remasters in particular, I think those are safe remasters, Oblivion and and Fallout 3. Mm -hmm. So I don't really see those getting canned, but you know, Ghost Bar Tokyo 2, that was something that might have been canned. Like, Mm-mm. games always get thrown out. So I wouldn't put too much, you know, emphasis behind any of those games. Besides, like, you know, uh, obviously Elder Scrolls 6, that's get that's not had anything happen to it. I'm hoping Dishonored 3, nothing happens to it because I really like the Dishonored games. Uh, but as far as, like, the hardware, the services, their future plans and what's been funded and what's not been funded, most of that is unlikely to change because let's yeah. be real, they just gonna oh the internet found out let's get rid of the 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 the, the mid gen generation and what's funny is a lot of people are saying that you know this is gonna really hurt Xbox. I would say too, like game wise, it, it's definitely an inconvenience because now Sony according to this thing they might not know when these games are coming out but they know if there is a potential of them being developed Mm -hmm. and most of the time these these competitions they're gonna know if you remember in that in that email with phil spencer and people before the the systems were announced phil knew the specs he said neither one of us have showed our, our 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 price point yet so they know the majority of this stuff. It's just we don't know. I I don't necessarily think any of this really not it's an inconvenience that the whole world knows. And maybe only certain people in Sony knew, like people that have friends and stuff. You gotta think a lot of these people, you know, the show, I'm sure that 
because the game was out on Xbox. Studios, yeah. Yeah, and then Minecraft, they're having to make games on um on an uh, on a PlayStation dev kit. Yeah. Obviously, they threatened to like take that away, and you know, I, I understand that to a degree because it's like that's competition. You don't really want to give them too many, uh, you know, tools. And they said they would never give them it. They just said, look, if they get Activision, we're not giving them the dev kits for right now. And that that would make sense. You wouldn't want them having the actual dev kits. Ha- hearing rumors or you know people saying that this might be there, or that might be there, is different than holding that dev kit yeah. because they can actually do a lot of damage with that dev kit. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I don't think this hurt too much. Uh, you know, if anything, it gave us the stuff to talk about. Uh, I don't think Microsoft wanted this out there though. There's a lot of like rumors saying that they. They leaked this intentionally. No one leaks this much r- much information intentionally. No one. It doesn't matter what company you are. Yeah, seven year roadmap. Yeah, that's not happening, bro. Um, and I, I'm not sure how one recover or pivot from it. They got some good ideas in there. Um, some things I'm looking forward to seeing. Biggest thing is more so the games. Knowing I didn't know that a Fallout Three wasn't even a thing. I know about the the Oblivion uh, the Oblivion remake was rumored. Uh, the Disney IP, have you determined what that might be outside of Indiana Jones? Because that was already like established. Well, it was rumored that they were making a Mandalorian game, remember? Uh, so, I mean, is that Zenimax Online doing that? Yeah, so maybe that's it. Uh, you know, Star Wars seems to be dropping it like it's hot. So, yeah, may- maybe that's a Star Wars game too. Could be a Star. They could have both. Zenimax could be making that and. You know, someone else could be making another game. Uh, apparently, Doom prequel is in the works. Yes, it was a they called it Doom Year One or what was it? It's supposedly like I would assume. I don't. I don't think we got a lot of context on the game, but I would assume it's how he became the Doom Slayer. Maybe you play as him as a human or something. Because he's still. I don't know a whole lot about Doom, and I'm sure someone will correct me. Is he is that dude a human? I or is know. he enhanced? He like something's going on with the dude, right? Because when every time you play the game, he wakes up in like a bed, a strap, or something like that, right? I don't know. I didn't play them. I've, I've always, I've, I haven't gotten too far in them, but I do recall like the openings of the games. Um, but I'm looking. I mean, you know, what, the thing that that's weird is that um, I I thought they were done with the Doom games. I thought. We I would we would see something about like a new quake, a new Wolfenstein. None of that was mentioned there, right? Oh, I'm sorry, my yeah. I, I keep forgetting to push the button. I think at this point, man, it's just a wait and see approach. Mm-hmm. Um, Ghostwire Tokyo too. Like I would like to see that. I know you're 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 a fan of the Dishonored series, right? Um, so those are. You know, fine, and I'm happy to see that. But as the as big as they are, they have they have like a a roadmap and content coming. Um, that looks like, and the thing is, when you put things into perspective, there were years next to these projects and these games, right? But in those that time have since come and gone. Um, you got to factor in that you know COVID played a huge role in delaying these games. Um, you know, and you a- know what's the the most hilarious part about this? Mm-hmm. Remember when all these games were getting delayed with that, uh, Xbox, and yep. they're like, "Oh, you know, it, uh, PlayStation doesn't seem to be having this issue. This is just an mm-hmm. Xbox thing. It's a quality thing. It's it's their studios. They're not the greatest thing." And it's like, no, it's because PlayStation had more games almost at the finish line. Now yeah. you're seeing a lot of these games, and the reason they're not announcing nothing is because none of these games are even close to being ready, so they don't want to do a thing where, oh, we're going to announce a game tomorrow, and five years from now it's going to come out. Uh, you know, people people really think Wolverine's coming out next year. Yeah. Um... Like, it, if I'm wrong, I, I love that. But I find the odds that they make Spider-Man and release it in 2023 – and release another big game in 2024. Unless Spider-Man's a small title, which I doubt it. I would say Spider-Man's like a 2025, end of five, early uh, 26, maybe holiday 2026. 
uh, Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. Because so, I know a lot of people were freaking out previously that because Spy- uh, Insomniac did Miles Morales for this launch to the PS5. And then uh, about six months later, they had Ratchet and Clank ready to go. Ratchet and Clank, obviously, a couple years, bigger team. And Miles Morales was essentially was essentially an expansion um, to the base game. So that that's you can see how possible uh, that was. But, uh, yeah, I don't think Wolverine is coming uh, next year. Um, heck, we might, even, we might not even hear about Wolverine um, next year. Um, Spider-Man is... And the crazy part, there's a chance that, you know, Jim Ryan mm-hmm. had them chasing the games of the service back so bad yeah. that we don't see any of the classic games that made PlayStation what they are for a while. Uh, because if you look at almost every studio has a rumored game that they're working on, that's some kind of uh, multiplayer or games as a service. Uh, you know, if I remember correctly, uh, gorilla is supposed to be working on some co-op feature or something like that. It, it, it's just, it's funny that Jim Ryan, I, I, are we going to talk about Jim Ryan leaving? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, why do you think he left? What do you think's going on? First of all, the people that don't know, Jim Ryan from PlayStation, I'm sure everyone watching this knows, he has officially uh, announced his retirement, and he will be leaving, I think, March of 2024. Question for you. I got a question for you. Okay. If the CMA and the FCC were successful in blocking a deal, does Jim Ryan retire? I don't think... I think he's leaving because they weren't successful. They already signed that deal. That mm. that's happening. Yeah. Like PlayStation would not have signed the last people that would sign that is PlayStation. Mm-hmm. They've already signed it. Mm-hmm. So it, you know, you could call me a conspiracy theorist. And that's fine. But it, like, I personally feel like they might be selling well, but I think their reputation is hitting a tank. Like, what do you mean by that? I think Jim Ryan has proved on every corner that he is losing some kind of struggle with something. Uh, For instance, what? We have no nothing about the future of PlayStation. Now, do we know nothing because they're deep down making the games or do we know nothing because he, it's like I said, how much games as a service is this, was this man pushing? We don't know. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, And to me, you combine that, you combine with the fact that he had a raise, uh, raise, um, raise the PlayStation Plus stuff. So that right there means they needed to, to financially benefit more from something else. Uh, you combine that with that one studio that he funded that they had to pretty much defund. Yeah, that was, um, damn, I forget what name of the studio, but go ahead. Yeah. And then you look at like, the reception that some of their games are getting, you know, Na- uh, Naughty Dog's Last of Us 2, an amazing game, but let's be real, especially the story, it got hit a lot, like a lot, a lot. Mm. Uh, and that was done under Jim, uh, you know? So it, it's just like, and what's funny is like, you know, we were talking, is Jim Ryan being pushed out? Or is he? I don't is he not? Uh, That's the thing, man. I it, think it, it's like... It, it, I think it's like a 50 50 thing. Because here's the thing. Yeah. Jim was there for three to four years. That might His be the time short, does very seem short. That might be the shortest term any executive's done in PlayStation. I don't keep up with the executives like that. I don't. But to me, first off, there's no successor picked already, which is weird. Okay. Um, you know, we looked up the dates that Phil, uh, that Phil, the dates that Sean, uh, Sean left and the dates that Jim. They were like two or three months apart. It's Not bad. even, yeah. So it's just like, you know, I think he was given, yo, you either live willingly or you're being pushed out. And I think he's like, okay, we'll find a successor and I'll leave. Because to me, he's doing well, but there is a lot of bad stuff going on with this brand as well. You know, you got people like Jack Move Johnny, hardcore PlayStation fan, not happy. You got people like Jabari and Persona, hardcore PlayStation fans. Uh, it seems like they have more negative stuff to talk about PlayStation than positive these days. Yeah. Does that mean they hate the brand? No. 
but I do feel like those are the people in the PlayStation community that I would recognize their opinions more than others because I do think that they call PlayStation out more often. And look, look what happened. Two years we waited for a PlayStation experience. We finally get it, and it can, it's arguably the, pl- the worst PlayStation event they've ever put. I forgot about that two-year hiatus. Um, the thing is, is that... So the weird thing is that... The thing- and real quick, too. Mm-hmm. Under Jim's reign... He let Xbox almost double their size. And he let Xbox take the Bethesda uh, publisher. And he let Xbox take Activision. I mean, now you, you, you can argue that there's nothing he could do, but we don't know what's behind closed doors. We don't know what conversations that they had with Bethesda that made Bethesda want to sell their company. Okay. The thing, the, the the thing though, it's not that he's leaving like a, a sinking ship, right? So he, he's not. PlayStation is in a is a, is in a really good place. Yeah, right now. they're right. But there's a there's a different, and we've seen with Metacritic, smooth. And you, I think you can agree, mm-hmm. where money isn't enough for PlayStation. They want their reputation to be up there too. Mm-hmm. That's why you know it was rumored that like Days Gone isn't getting a sequel because the Metacritic score wasn't where they wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. So to me. They do care about that money more than everything, but almost just as much they care about their reputation of their company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, their their content. Um, so PlayStation Five wildly successful, you know, records breaking, fast fast selling, and um, Jim Ryan managed to raise the price of almost everything: games, uh, their the services, console. the console, the subscription services. So he successfully has done that. Now, I think was probably so, someone told me, and I don't know if it's true, mm-hmm. but apparently someone from like the finance department or something like like it's not even a gaming person that's taking over mm-hmm. as an intern. And, and the dude, uh, you know, I don't know, but he seemed like he he's in the corporate world pretty heavy. And he's like, in my experiences, when stuff like that happens, there's more going on. Yeah. Because it wasn't it wasn't anyone from PlayStation that didn't take over. We got to remember that. Why is not a PlayStation executive, someone over there higher up, or someone that they've nurtured to to take? Because you clearly say they're doing that with Sarah Bond and Phil Spencer. Mm-hmm. If Phil tomorrow said he wanted to retire, I guarantee you Sarah would slide in this place like nothing happened. They gotta have been doing that with someone in PlayStation. Yeah. Why ain't that person taking over? Or maybe it was sudden. I think it might have been, you know, sudden. Um, he does. He, this is like a, a six months announcement because he leaves in six months, so he still got some. And time. You know, he's younger than Phil. How? Yeah, he's younger than Phil. We looked it up on the Attic Show. Yeah, I got the right birthday because uh, Jim Ryan looks like he's like touching. Like, why don't early you look 60s. what Phil Spencer looked like before he took over and now? I don't think Jim Ryan's uh, younger than Phil Spencer. I, I think I'm looking up. I think that's just a that's a wiki error, bro. Uh, what are they both fifty five? Because that don't make sense to me. Okay, hold up. He 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 might be older. Yeah, like. Um, Okay, this is weird. It says, as of 2023, Jim Ryan is 63-year-old, making him around 53-year-old uh, years old in 2021. He was born in, they're saying he was born in 63 or 53. I don't know. Hold up. Keep, keep going while I look this yeah. up. Yeah. Um, the thing about um, this whole Jim Ryan thing is that it's like, yeah, PlayStation is wildly successful. Right. But do they foresee, based off their own projections, their own content roadmap, a drop off or something like that? Because you got to think about it this year, you know, they've only dropped, like outside of VR, they've only dropped. Spider Man is, is going to be the only game that they dropped. So, and we don't know nothing really for 2024. 
So it, when stuff like that happens, you have to project like, okay, what are we estimated to make? How much of a loss are we going to take in the next year? And it looks like 2020, like 2023, 2024 could be a lost year in terms of what they're going to be able to make, what they're going to be able to put out. And some of that money might become bad because they did a lot of hardware uh, this year. A lot of they, they, they put out a lot of different hardware, uh, obviously, with the PS5, with the VR, now with the PlayStation Portal. And then next year, there's probably going to be a PS5 Pro. So they, they're probably going to be able to show some numbers because it's just off the share of new releases. But um, I don't know. It was shocking because, you know, we all I mean talk about Jim Ryan and, you know, the year he kind of, you know, made a name for himself trying to get this Activision uh, deal stopped. And he was very you know vocal about that. Um, so to hear that he's uh, stepping down, it was a big a big shock uh, to me. But um, the thing about a lot of these dudes on, on PlayStation with the Sean Laden's and the Andrew House and everyone, everybody leaves, uh, you know, they managed to leave with the platform on top. So on top. So you really can't it can't really knock him. But I, I am curious. I'm, I'm, I am curious if, if travels the really the, the biggest culprit at him stepping down. Your thoughts. I agree with you. Uh, did you locate his real age? <laughs> Still looking. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know what else uh, I, I wanted to uh, discuss that's very controversial? You might have heard this. I don't know if you did a video on it, though. Uh, so IGN, they had podcast beyond. And they were talking about Spider-Man and they were talking about the review score of it. What is it going to be? And the beyond it's a PlayStation podcast on IGN. The panelist says, if someone from IGN gives this game anything less than a nine, right? He will call them out for it, right? Now, People took weary of this. They was like, wait, this these dudes are already preparing to score this game relatively high when one of their peers on you know, Starfield still don't know why this one particular person had got access to Starfield, right? Uh rated the game surprisingly uh low despite the content mentioned. And no one felt the need to call him out for it, but people will be willing to need to call him out for it if somebody scores Spider Man lower than a nine. It, it was just it was just a weird um, a weird take, and people didn't take kindly to that uh, because it you know shows it looks more like bias. Phil Spencer and him are the same age. They're both they were both born in sixty uh, eight. Okay. Okay. Phil Spencer looks a lot younger though than Jim Ryan. I he I mean Can you, you showed this age. on uh on the stream. Uh, uh where is it? Depend on where it is. Um are you, uh, is it on Twitter? If you if you if you have it on Twitter, I can probably utilize it, but Ooh. I don't know why I was just gonna in the in inbox. I was looking at the all the games. <laughs> Doom Year Zero and DLC. Okay. Okay. All right, let me see what we got here. Um, all right, it's on Twitter. Let's see. I uh, see. I looked at, I don't, um, one. All right. So Phil Spencer is from Wikipedia, which is, and then Jim Ryan one is kind of weird. His is from like a fan made site. It says he's, yeah, I don't, I don't feel the need to share this. I looked at this earlier. This thing, this website is like filled flats. 
Blads. But if that's the case, that's the case. You know, it is what it is. Um, Another website says he's 55. Uh, Jim Ryan, right? Wow. Okay. I just sent you another one. I got it. Oh, man. Um, so uh, what else we got? Um, we got going on there. I feel like I, I, I missed so much uh, with this week. Let me just take a dude from Larian Studios. Did did Larian have a major layoff? Oh, uh, hold up. Let's um. Let me talk a little bit about the Spider Man thing. Go ahead. I don't. I don't think people should look at this too much. Um, you know, I do think he should be more aware of the statements he's saying, mm-hmm. considering everything that happened with Starfield. Mm-hmm. But I don't think he was saying we're going to give it a nine because uh, most likely IGN. I wouldn't be surprised if they gave it a ten. So it, it's just like. I think he was just joking around, but it's just like, dude, Starfield, it's got its issues, but it's not a, it's not a six or a seven. If that's your opinion, that's cool. But it's like, you know, we saw the screenshots. We saw the, the things people were bringing up on. It's like, you know, was it his honest opinion or was he punishing Microsoft for either, you know, they don't, cause he doesn't like Xbox, which I don't think that's the case or I think he that's just did case. or, or, he just did, doesn't like the moves Microsoft's making. What moves? They releasing games. It's there like was, there were some uh, comments that he made saying he didn't like the consolidation. Oh, so Microsoft's the only. So that means he should have given every Embracer game like a freaking zero. But it, it only matters when Xbox does it. You didn't hear? Yeah, it's Pinhead Larry's. What's his name? Dan Dan Steepwichin. Um. Yeah, I mean, I like again, I'm not fooling with IGN. There's people that I like from IGN, like Ryan and Destin, but IGN be doing butthead things like giving straight up like controversial people access to things. Um, that will that is pretty much detrimental to the you know the public opinion of uh, yeah, and, Xbox. And then another thing I've never understood is why does like websites like IGN get like a ridiculous amount of review access. Like I, I, w- I heard there was like 30 plus Starfield codes that went there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it's hard to tell how many PlayStation sent of Spider-Man. And I get that they're a big outlet, but it's like, you'll sit here and tell the rest of the industry. We only got a limited amount of codes, but yep. you're sending like the top five, probably 10, 15% of your codes. Yeah, no, you're right. doesn't make sense. Um, it really doesn't make sense. But I, I, as I mentioned before, like if I'm like, you know, Xbox and and Bethesda, like I, I, I got an actual hit list, a block list, and I ain't changing it. Like they I, I, I think a lot of people, a lot of these journalists earn they earn the right to be on the block list. Do not send lists. Um, and I do hope, you know, Microsoft and Bethesda stand 10 toes down um and support of that if people are like well you know if maybe they'll learn not to like withhold codes it's like okay so so bethesda can't have a backbone xbox yep. can't have a backbone you know what's crazy they sit there and they criticized xbox for quote unquote you know i don't think that they were cherry picking but i do think that they were cherry picking in a way where it's like you have done nothing but bash our brand Mm-hmm. Nothing but make negative videos about Starfield. Why should I send you a code? It makes no sense. I don't care if you got a million subs. You you have done nothing positive about our game. Mm-hmm. Sure, you might like our game. Sure, you might shit on our game. But why would I send you a code and give you the privilege of having access to that game before it comes out when you have done nothing to deserve that code? It, it, but they, they want to sit there and they want to highlight that. But there's been countless PlayStation blacklistings that's went on throughout the years. Absolutely. There's been a lot of people that's come out openly and said, yo, they didn't send me a code because I, I shit on Gran Turismo or I shit on Last of Us. Like, there's been 
multiple occasions where that happened. And what's the one thing that you heard, uh, uh, smooth from the PlayStation community? That's just how business is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's a it's a tough one. I'm not personally. I'm not worried about like um, like Spider Man. A lot of people are, you know, making a, a big deal, and, and, and it's finally coming out. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, playing it, but the only thing is, is that my excitement isn't where it was uh, previously. How it would normally be for a game like this? Because I think I mentioned this in the last uh, the last podcast we did. I'm a bit I'm a bit fatigued on on Spider Man games. Like I said, they they there's I feel like there's been like a quite a few of them in a short period of time. Know what to expect. Yeah, not to mention after God of War Ragnarok, and I know you know some people will. will will agree on this that's that's watching not all of them mm -hmm. but i have noticed that there's a fatigue on playstation games in general mm -hmm. yeah i noticed type. like when, when when it was god of war people loved it but like, okay now this is a great experience sony playstation but now you got to do something different like this you can't keep doing this formula no you're, you're right you're right i think that formula is getting growing tired it is growing tired, like, because uh, the thing is, you know, it, it's grown tired for me already a long time ago, because what happened was, is when it came down to the sequels of, for example, of um, Horizon Zero Dawn, when it came to Forbidden West, I couldn't play through it. When it came to God of War Ragnarok, I couldn't play through it. And um, and now we're about to go to Spider-Man. I don't see myself not playing through Spider-Man, um, but the thing is, it's the, the eagerness the all nighters, the like, oh my god, I can't wait. Like, I don't think that's going to be the case. I'll play it, I'll enjoy it, and I'll move on to the next. Um, but they're becoming harder to see through. Like, I, I don't want another The Last of Us anytime soon. Like, I, that, like I, I just don't. Um, but you know, I, I don't want to, you know, harp too much on you know, you no know, PlayStation. Uh, uh, they, they again, they, they're going to wrap up the year with their uh, was with Spider Man. Um, and Xbox, you know, still got a, still got a, um, Forts in a tug, still got to close his Activision deal, which we're, we're starting to see, uh, messages for Call of Duty coming to Game Pass. You've been following that? Not really. So explain, uh, what's going on. Yeah. So people are finding when you click on older Call of Duty games in a Microsoft oh, yeah, store. Yeah. That. Yeah. Um, I think we all know. I, I think the deal's already done. I, I think that they just ain't made the official announcement yet. Mm -hmm. Or it's done enough where they own it, but they're just waiting for the official paperwork to go through. Because uh, we saw where they went over there and they did a job uh, application mm -hmm. as Microsoft for Activision. We see Call of Duty uh, slowly leaking over there, mm -hmm. and then when you uh, and then what's funny is when the FTC started the nonsense again. Yes. Lula said, "Usually she flips out every time, flips the fuck out." But this time she's like, "We're working with Microsoft to close. If they want to waste more of taxpayer money, that's an FTC decision." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know why the FTC is doing that. Um, I wonder if they they're going to be impacted by the government shutdown. Um, but I, it's like I've never seen like I don't know if I understand why they they're doing that. Like it, it, it's crazy. But uh, never. I mean, I guess they they never going to give up. Never going to give up. Hey, we that's never thought uh, they did would catch a Tupac killer and they and they did so, <laughs> after thirty years. But um, uh man, what else do we have? Uh, going on along we have um larian dude uh they they had layoffs and and, and one of the major producers is joining fable team like actually you want to get technical xbox like everyone was laying off and xbox was ramping up there was like five or six linkedin profiles i saw that uh you know sloth was posting on twitter mm -hmm. you know, people went to arcane people was going to mm. um undead labs like there was a few of them it wasn't just one or two it was a few yeah okay that's what's so up. something with coalition saying gear uh their next project was coming out in 2026 or something 2025 coalition yo speaking of the next project 
I saw somebody was posting that saying state of the case when to come out in 2027, dude. Is that like, have you? Someone, so I made a video about it. Well, it was part of a video because I've been doing like these multi video stuff. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And uh, pretty much what happened is like 2027, there were, uh, someone posted what they were working on when it was supposed to come out. And I think it was like one of the audio websites where like LinkedIn is more of an overall and there's certain websites that like are specific on what they do. Yeah. And that said that state of decay was 2027 since it's been, since then it's been removed. Uh, but I just, if that's true, that's true. I find it hard to believe that's yeah. true. Yeah, man. That's I, so I think that had to have been a, like a, like a miss t- a, a typo or something. Maybe it is true, but to think that they've already, they announced that game like three years ago and they need another four. So it just it makes me think that either that was a typo or Undead Labs is on fire right now. Yeah, but my <laughs> thing is they, they they made their own mocap studio like a year and a half ago though. Oh really? Okay. All right. So I mean it's possible they just dropped even another what's it another expansion to to, to stay the gate too, but that was largely done by another studio, right? Um, for the curveball DLC, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's another studio that has been working on State of Decay Two. They haven't been, they haven't worked on it in a while. Yeah, I, the, I can't imagine them taking another four years for this game. And um, I, I, I am about ready to see like what everybody's doing uh, from all the announcements that happened in 2020, you know, 2021. We get those updates. Are we going to get another Xbox uh, developer direct uh, in January? Are they going to show up to the Game Awards uh, this year and, and and give us anything? Give us any tidbit? Um, and you just never know. You just never know with um, Microsoft, man. But um, we're going to get ready to wrap this up. Um, you know, we appreciate you guys uh, joining us. Episode eighteen. Uh, just about an hour and I, I'm so freaking tired. My body can't take it. Um, uh, I want to give a quick shout out to, you know, Attic, uh, who's been holding it down, especially with the little kitten and with the interference. <laughs> oh man. Uh, what you got going on, man? What can we look forward to? Uh, right now, uh, I am trying to work on more like long term opinion pieces on mm-hmm. my youtube channel uh tomorrow well at the time this goes up most likely iop already been through definitely go over there and check that out king going to be really loose when it comes to this jim ryan thing retiring uh you know i appreciate everyone that does watch my channel there's a lot of growth going on right now with Absolutely. that uh you know i've I'm almost halfway to six thousand subs already yeah but I, check like that. I just hit five thousand yeah. like i feel like i just hit five thousand yeah, five. I think you were at like five point five when I saw it. So uh, a good job. Uh, I was watching a couple of videos before you, before we uh, went in. So uh, yeah, make sure you guys subscribe to Gaming Addict. Somebody reached out to me on Twitter today. It's like, yo, smooth. Where's your videos? <laughs> My bad, dude. Like I said, his personal life got away. Uh, I, I'm going to try. The thing is, is, this is what's going on with me. If I produce a video. Um, that means I was unproductive somewhere else. That's how busy uh, my uh, life is over the past. Uh, and I, and I, you know, you should start doing it till you calm down. Yeah, do, do, do a video when you're driving. Oh, do the post ups, the what you call yeah, them, the live yeah, chronicles. Yeah, uh, man, I, you know, I thought about that, but yeah, I, you could just record while you're driving and talk and then just post it. Like, fuck it, like. You know, if things are busy and you think you need to, you get know, you're out, right. I got a decent commute. Time. You're right, because I got, I do got to sometimes have a decent commute. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try that for sure. Uh, but we appreciate you guys. Give me more than ten minutes for, for a the, thumbnail. For the thumbnail, right? My bad. Yeah, I've been bad with that with my communication on the thumbnails. Um, appreciate you guys coming through. Uh, shout out to BG Web Will Podcast from Will Patreon. Make sure you guys come in with the questions. We only have one question this week. I don't know how when the, the question has been posted up for a week, bro. But uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next week. We got a couple actually dedicated podcasts coming through too, where we're gonna be raking some Xbox games, some Xbox Studios and stuff. So adding might bring like Jack move in or something. Someone yeah. has like an opposite effect. Yeah. 
So uh, we'll th- those we should make it like we all have to agree or something like that. Like <laughs> that's going to be difficult, but I look forward to doing that though. Uh, but we definitely appreciate you guys, you guys for watching. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best spot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out of here. Peace.